All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakhakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity wholeheartedly, Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers, Shalom to you. And um, as you see, Job 32 and 8, it said, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Now, the inspiration is the breath of the Most High. And um, that's what this video is about. I just want to talk about the breath, man. Um, the breath is what keep us in this faith. You know, um, because you have understanding. Understanding is very, very important. And with the breath comes understanding. With the breath comes 100% doctrine. You're not um, wavering in your mind like certain Hebrew Israelites who says that nobody got 100% truth. Then you're trying to say that the Lord's breath is limited. It's, you know, um, it's only 99%. But um, I want to go into that word inspiration. And the word is um, Nashama. Nashama. And as it says, you see breath, spear, breath of the God, breath of the most high, breath of man, every breathing thing. But right here, that's what it's about. Divine. That's heavenly. That comes from the heavens. And it's an inspiration, intellect. See, with the inspiration, a.k.a. the breath. You know all things. And. Neshama. You know. Um, that's what the men of the Lord have. The ones that's. Matter of fact. Because also the breath. Is the spirit. You know the spirit is what give us understanding. And that's the inspiration. That's the breath of the Lord. And that's why the Lord said this. Most high is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that spirit, of course, is the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit, and also the breath, the inspiration, the divine intellect. And um matter of fact, I never looked up these words. Let me see something real quick. I just want to see what it says for spirit. Like Numa or Strong's G 4151 Numa Numa. Yep. Uh, of course, I got a whole bunch of definitions. Let me see if I can find one. Ooh, a lot of them. So, rational spirit, a uh, whole bunch of saying the same thing, but pretty much, you know, it's a breath of breath. It's the Rakakwadash, you know, and to see what it say down here. Analogy, figurative, a spirit, the rational soul, mental, mental disposition, which, um, oh, there it go. All these damn definitions. Esau said something else. Holy Spirit. See, and with the Holy Spirit, that's why. Uh, let's go 10 chapters over. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, not no damn ghost. Whom the Father was sent in my name. See how important the name is? See, with the name comes 100% understanding. So if you don't have the name and you're really on the fence about the name, you don't have the comforter. You don't have 100% understanding. All right? He shall teach you all things, talking about the comforter, which the Father was sent in Yahweh's name, 
and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So now so you got to understand. So the Old Testament was already done with when Yahweh came on the scene. The New Testament was being written. All right. Then as when you go to Luke. So at the end of Yahweh Shah's journey, this is what he told the disciples. When he was about to go on the cross. Matter of fact, this is after he um was um yeah, this is after. And he said unto them, These were these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then all right, then he Open Salakia. Then open he their understanding that they may understand the scripture. See, so that's the Lord putting us back in remembrance. So let's read it again. But the covenant which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So when Yahweh finished his course, he gave the disciples a hundred percent understanding because he opened their understanding. All right. And then when you go to Acts, he said, You go there, Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So from that time on, see back then, we had the truth. Jeremiah 17 and 4, also 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, said that we will fall away. All right. We'll lose our heritage. That's Jeremiah 17 and 4. And we are going to captivity into a land that we, uh, that we knew not. And then um, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3 said that, you know, that the kingdom ain't going to come till we fall away and the uh, son of perdition be revealed, which is Esau, Edom, self-proclaimed white man, 1681. But and also you have to put this um, vibration out there for the scoffers. So that's the only reason I'm making this video is because you have a lot of people on the fence in my spirit. You know, I'm just a man. I ain't nobody. But before I read this, um, in my spirit, I just feel like people are still out here, you know, acting like they down, but they really ain't down. They got some doubt, you know, um, but the Lord said, you know, judge nothing before he come. He will he will um, reveal the hearts of men, you know, but that, like I said, that's just in my spirit, you know. So this reason I'm making this type of video, because I. uh people they just they, they flip floppy man so anyways but you verse john 2 and 20 but you have an unction from the holy one and you know all things see that's that's plain and simple and then if you don't believe that you call in the lord a liar you call in the lord a liar is in is in the word is in the book man this is if you if you pick up this book and you teach it and you profess it then you gotta believe everything. Not a hundred not not of uh, ninety-nine percent, not ninety-nine point nine percent, not ninety-two percent, but a hundred. Everything. See the Lord, when it comes to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you can't put them in a box. You can't put them in a box. And a lot of people try to do that. So from here, going back to the breath. So it said, for wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High. Who is the breath? Wisdom. Wisdom is the 100% understanding. Men who are in this thing in true sincerity, we don't have no doubts about prophecy and, you know, who is this person? Who is that person in the scriptures? What does prophecy mean? You know, call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for that type of faith, for that type of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. See, wisdom is not defiled, and wisdom is not um, double minded. So it says, For she is the breath of the power of the Most High, and pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. <clears throat> so, real quick, that has made me think of something. Uh, hold on. I think it's Titus. 
So can no foul thing enter into her, right? So unto the pure, all things are pure. That's the people who got the wisdom, the hundred percent truth. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. So that's why wisdom cannot enter into you because you a doubter and your conscience is not right, a.k.a. your spirit. So I can read 16, even though that's kind of, you know, not the uh, I just want to stick to the breath. But they profess that they know the most high for the people who's in doubt. But in works, they deny him because you doubt being abominable and disobedient, thinking that you got the 100 percent truth and unto every good work reprobate. Reprobate means to be without judgment, a.k.a. to be without the most high and his son. So going back and it said, for she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of the most high and the image of his goodness. And being but one, she could do all things, all right? Like go into a man and open his understanding to 100% truth. That's what wisdom can do. All things new and in all ages enter into holy souls. Ooh, matter of fact, what is that? I think it's one in 11 or one in four. That's a good one. Let me see. It might be one. Of... Let me see. Hold on. Fear the Lord making redness. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This whole chapter bad. <clears throat> I bet you I hmm it will damn I, I did I did say four look at me anyways so it said for into a malicious soul matter of fact I gotta go back now for I can make the point of why I wanted that precept so reading 27 again let me get it on deck before and but being one, she could do all things and remain in herself. She make all things new, like the new creature that you're supposed to become. The old man supposed to pass away. You're supposed to become a new creature. And in all ages, entering into holy souls. So now let's read. Wisdom have been created before all things in the understanding of the prudence from everlasting. That's not it. What the hell? Uh, I swear. That's not it. Goodness gracious. Hey, this happens sometimes. Satan always in the midst. Dude, I just saw it. Hmm. Scripture that I'm looking for said that wisdom cannot enter into malicious souls. And I don't understand why I can't find it. Look real quick. I got to find it, man. All right. One more time. Enter in malicious. Let me see if that works. Oh, wisdom of Solomon. <laughs> I, wisdom is Solomon one and four. See, hey, it is what it is. It happens sometimes. I'm just going to read it from here. So for into a malicious soul, wisdom should not enter 
nor dwell in the body that's subject to sin. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in a body that's subject to sin. And that means to be willfully sinning. All right, because we all sin. You know, we ain't perfect yet. That's why the scripture said that this um, corruptible is going to put on incorruption. This mortal is going to put on immortality. So let's talk about a person who are into willfully sinning with no fear of the Lord. So wisdom cannot enter into malicious soul, nor a body that's subjected to sin. So I'll read 27 again in the video and then read 28. And being but one, but she, she can do all things and remain in herself. She make all things new and all ages enter into holy souls, not malicious souls. She make of them friends of the most high and prophets. And that goes perfectly with John 15. It said that I call you friends because a friend knows what his servant. Uh, Damn, I'm paraphrasing it. <laughs> Let me just get it real quick. Oh, uh, this real quick. There we go. Henceforth, I call you not servants for the service knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. So we are actually Yahweh Shah's friend. We are his servants, though. But a friend is a closer relationship because we know the secrets. So it said, and in all ages enter into holy souls, she making them friends of the most high and prophets because we know the secrets, which means we need to have 100 percent understanding for the most high love of none. But those that dwell with wisdom. So if you have <clears throat> doubt in your heart and you saying that. Nobody got 100% truth. And then you want to use scriptures like in 1 Corinthians 13, talk about we know in part and we prophesy in part. That don't got nothing to do with 100% truth. That's talking about the Lord said that don't no one know the day or the time or the hour. So we only can talk about what's going to happen. You know, we can talk about Jacob's trouble. We don't, we don't know what it's actually going to look like. We can read about the, you know, the uh, our father's throne, but we can't tell you what it look like. That's what it's talking about. So we don't know how the karagma is going to be rolled out, but through the spirit, we can speak on it because it's in the scripture. So anyways, hopefully this video is edifying and hey, glad I got through it. Satan was trying to mess me up. Shalom.